Hey yo, what is up Thrill Seekers? Today I am here to talk about the new Six Flags business model and what it means for Six Flags Fiesta Texas specifically, what it means for all Six Flags parks, and also kind of going further into the switch between the memberships and the new season pass system as we get more information and data on why they made that switch and why it was so smart for the company to do. First of all, if you guys didn't know, Six Flags is going to be going into a new business model. Six Flags CEO said that they are going to start focusing more on park enhancements. They are going to start popping up more food locations, more food options, starting to hire more people in that department in order to make those food lines go faster, enhance the guest experience that way, as well as adding more seating areas, um, improving the looks of the parks with uh, repaints and things along those lines. Um, definitely, definitely going to feel better as you go into the Six Flags parks. You're not going to walk in and be like, oh, this is kind of dirty. I just waited 30 minutes to get a crappy burger and fries, right? Um, th those are the types of things that they're going to start improving. And that's super, super exciting. Now with that, there is definitely the catch of a new season pass system. If you want, click up in the right hand corner of your screen as I did an entire video just talking about the new season pass system and comparing it to the old membership system, the pros, the cons, my opinions, things along those lines. So if you really want an in-depth review of that, definitely click up there. But just a super short summary, they are going to be switching to a new season pass system um, instead of the membership system. This new season pass system is a little bit more expensive and does not actually have as many benefits as the old membership system did. Um, but we see that as a way that Six Flags is getting more money so that they can make your guest experience a lot better. Now, touching on the switch between the memberships and the new season pass system, we now see a huge reason um, why they did this and, and how it was not just a spur of the moment, like, oh, let's see if this works. It was actually based on real data. So getting to the numbers, um, we see that between 2019, um, the end of 2019, and the end of 2021, we saw the memberships declining from 2.6 million members to one, or sorry, to 2.1 million members by the end of 2021. That's about a 500,000 member decrease. Now, of course, COVID definitely had a huge part in that, but on the contrary, we actually see a increase in the number of season pass holders going from 5.1 million at the end of 2019 to 6.2 million at the end of 2021. Um, with that, that's a 1.1 million um, person increase. So even if we assume that all of the people who quit their memberships ended up just getting season passes instead, that's still 600,000 people um, that are completely new to having any sort of Six Flags pass um, in, in general. So definitely we see a huge uptake in the number of season pass sales that Six Flags got, which makes sense why they are starting to expand that aspect of the pass. Instead of going with memberships, which we see declining in popularity, instead they're going with these season passes that are increasing in popularity. Um, the season pass, like the regular season pass, though it does have like four or five blockout dates um, in the 365 day year. Um, we do see a little bit more benefits in terms of like flash passes, um, you know, a, a one skip the line pass, um, most visits, um, as well as just like a really cheap option for people who maybe only go to one Six Flags Park, you know? Most people who live in the San Antonio, Austin area are not gonna end up at Six Flags Great Adventure um, and therefore will opt to just buy the most basic level of, of season pass and go, especially if this, this basic level has a decent amount of benefits. So overall, we really do see 
oh, like Six Flags actually was very smart with this, right? Um, instead of just saying, oh, people love the memberships, but uh, let's, let's get rid of them and, and do this more expensive system anyways. Uh, instead they saw, oh, most people, right? Of course, outside of the enthusiast community, most people are actually opting for our season passes over our memberships now. So let's take advantage of that. Let's expand this season pass system, try to persuade more people to buy that version. Um, and the people with memberships, they are going to be the ones who are going to the park a ton anyways. So let's just make them a little bit more expensive. E even if you like, if you still look at like, let's say Cedar Fair, for example, the lowest price that you can get for a season pass that offers uh, you admission to all Cedar Fair parks is $230. Six Flags is about 160, 170. So that is still a huge, huge difference. Six Flags is still in no way uh, an expensive chain. There's still definitely a discount park. Um, they just are taking more advantage of the uptake in season pass sales that we saw. And now to the juicy part of the video. Um, what is going to be happening to Six Flags Fiesta Texas? As an employee of Six Flags Fiesta Texas, I can definitely speak on this. Um, we're going to see a lot of cool new changes at Fiesta Texas, specifically in the rides department. Um, this is not like secret stuff either. Uh, this is stuff that other Six Flags parks especially have, have started to announce. So it's not anything that I was told to keep secret, um, nor is it something that anyone wants me to keep secret. So don't, don't worry, I'm not exposing <laughs> some crazy stuff here. The Six Flags Rides Department is going to start to hire groupers. Um, so if you are 15 and you want to go work um, at Six Flags um, in the Rides Department, but you do have to be 16 in order to operate the rides itself, you can work as a grouper. Um, this is someone who is going to be in charge of grouping guests, making sure that they are, uh, that every single row is filled. They are also going to be in charge of new single rider lines that are going to start popping up at um, Six Flags uh, parks um, on specific, uh, specific attractions. I know that they are planning on giving Iron Rattler a single rider line, most likely Superman will have a single rider line, as well as some other major attractions that we see. Um, and, and it'll definitely increase capacity. It'll definitely be something that people can opt into and it'll shorten the lines, get more people on every single cycle. It's gonna help us out um, as ride operators, it's gonna help you guys out as guests, really getting that line as short as possible. In terms of Dr. Diabolical's cliffhanger specifically, there are going to be lockers um, about midway through the line, theoretically. Um, are they free or not? I heard that they are supposed to be, but don't quote me on that. Um, hopefully they are. Not 100% sure on that one, but theoretically they should be free lockers. Kind of something like we see on Twisted Timbers or Steel Vengeance, where they are double-sided. You have to put everything that's in your pockets into those lockers, and it's going to speed up operations so, so much. All you have to do, walk in, sit down, we check restraints, we send you out. That's what's really going to enable Dr. Diabolical's cliffhanger to run three trains um, and it's going to allow us to like just send those out, get the line moving super, super quick and, and try not to stack um, as, as much or, or if at all. Same thing with Iron Rattler. They are actually getting a third train for Iron Rattler. Now don't think that Iron Rattler can run three trains. It cannot. Um, that first section of brakes that slows you down is all magnetic brakes and therefore cannot stop a train. So, so, uh, so Iron Rattler is not physically capable of running three trains, but the third train will act as a good maintenance train. Six Flags is an all year round park, meaning that for part of the year, as they're doing intensive maintenance on one of the trains, we have to run one train. So in order to make that happen as 
um, as least as possible, I guess, um, they're going to get a new train from Gerslauer coming in theoretically sometime this month or next month. Um, and with that, they will be able to guarantee that Iron Rattler is running two trains at all times. So overall, this is a lot. This is actually really, really exciting um, in terms of single rider lines, groupers at the front, um, multiple train operations guaranteed all the time, um, not having to worry about maintenance, um, annual maintenance or anything along those lines, and really making sure that those lines keep moving. It's definitely going to be something that is going to increase guest satisfaction and just be way better for you guys. And if that means that you have to pay an extra, you know, $50 um, in the year in order to get that, I don't think that that is too big of a deal um, for sure. So hopefully you guys agree with me on that one. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, that's just a touch on uh, Six Flags' new business model, why they chose to go there, and what we will be seeing at Six Flags Fiesta Texas specifically because of it. Anyways, definitely subscribe to this channel for more theme park updates. That's why it's called Theme Park Update. Um, and other than that, I will see you guys all next time. Peace out. Bye.